Good morning and welcome to Face the Nation. It is a somber Sunday as we come on the air today. In London, there is unprecedented security for the hundreds of world leaders, including President Biden, who are gathering for tomorrow's state funeral of Queen Elizabeth. It will be the largest assembly of heads of state and government in years. Our Scott Pelley spoke with President Biden before he left for the UK and discussed how he's navigating the new world order for tonight's season premiere of 60 Minutes. President Xi and Vladimir Putin have met on the same day that you and I are sitting here in the White House. And I wonder if this is a new, more complicated Cold War. How do you manage it? I don't think it is a new, more complicated Cold War. Look, when, um, when President Xi invited Putin to Beijing during the Olympics where they had their meeting and the, you know, the new relationship, not long after that, I called President Xi. Not to threaten at all, just to say to him, we've met many times. And I said that if you think that Americans and others will continue to invest in China based on your violating the sanctions that have been imposed on Russia, I think you're making a gigantic mistake, but that's for your decision to make. Thus far, there's no indication that they've put forward weapons or other things that Russia has wanted. So, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't say anymore. Oh, I wish you would. No. Here at home, a political firestorm erupted between Republicans and Democrats over immigration, an issue made more complicated by challenging relationships between the U.S. and some of our neighbors to the South. Republican governors have been relocating some who've crossed the border into their red states for months now. But last week, the images of migrants flown or bust from Texas to Martha's Vineyard, Vice President Harris's residence in Washington and New York City, has sparked a fury of political backlash. I think it is um, the height of irresponsibility, much less just... Um, frankly, a dereliction of duty when you are an elected leader to play those kinds of games with human life. They were so proud to be sanctuary jurisdictions, saying how bad it was to have a secure border. The minute even a small fraction of what those border towns deal with every day is brought to their front door, they all of a sudden go berserk. Now New Yorkers and people in Washington, D.C. are having to deal with it, and now Texas is sharing our pain with the rest of the country. The U.S. is set to record more than 2 million migrant arrests at the border with Mexico this year, a record high. We turn now to Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar. He represents a border district in South Texas, and he joins us this morning from Laredo. Uh, Congressman, I know you feel strongly about what's happening in your backyard. I wonder if both you and your constituents support busing these migrants up and down the East Coast? Look, you know, first of all, we need solutions and not theater. Uh, by sending off uh, folks off to uh, New York and Chicago, it does bring attention, but I, we want to focus more on solutions on the border. We got to get Border Patrol, we got to get ICE, Homeland Security, the equipment, the, you know, the making sure they have everything where they can enforce the law. Because if we don't have repercussions at the border, we're going to continue getting 8,000 people a day. And let me mention one more thing, Margaret. You know, they, they might get two buses uh, a day uh, in some of those cities. Just for my hometown of Laredo, we're sending out 21 to 26 buses a day yeah. out of Laredo just to give you an idea of what's happening here. Right. Understood the volume. But, of course, in some of these places like Martha's Vineyard, there aren't even, you know, migration centers and there was no coordination. Is that the part you're objecting to? Yeah, look, after all, uh, the, the migrants are human beings and we got to treat them like human beings. Yeah. They're being used as political pawns to get uh, uh, to get publicity. But at the same time, you know, I represent some of the poorest counties along the border uh, in the nation. Right. Well, I know you have shared with us um, some video of what's happening uh, in your district um, that law enforcement officers have shared with you um, some pictures, some video that our viewers are seeing right now. Uh, is law enforcement getting the resources that they need? 
No, look, you know, the men and women in green, uh, the men and women uh, from Homeland, they need to get the support. They're good men and women. And what they need to do is have two things. One, they need to get more personnel, and we're adding more personnel in the appropriations bill. Uh, they need to get the equipment. They need to get, but uh, they need to get help. But the most important thing is they got to be able to enforce the repercussions because if you don't enforce what the does repercussions, that mean? Just, what does that mean? Repercussions? Are you talking about the fact that many of these migrants that are being busted are from countries like Venezuela, where the U.S. cannot deport them because of diplomatic relations being so strained? Look, you know, right now we're getting people from Saudi Arabia, China, India, Bangladesh, and of course Cuba uh, and uh, Venezuela. There are certain folks, you know, the countries that might not accept some of the people. You got to look at the asylum. But most of the people coming in don't apply for asylum. We got to do, as your next guest is going to say, Secretary Jay Johnson. He treated the people with respect, but at the end of the day, he. Uh, he enforced the law and he returned people. And one of the things that this administration is not doing is they're showing pe that he showed people going and landing in the countries in Honduras and uh, Salvador to show that there's repercussions. Right. Margaret, when was the last time you saw you saw a picture or video of people going back? You only see people coming in and you got to have words along well with action to enforce it. Right. I mean, it, it's pretty complicated, but Title 42 still is in place. There is expelling of migrants happening. It sounds like what I hear you saying is you want the White House or higher level officials to go and make these public statements. Um, it, Vice President Harris, when she was asked about this, pointed right back to people with your job, lawmakers, to go rewrite the laws and pass immigration reform. Uh, what actually needs to be done and how do you respond to that? Look, there are enough, and, and with all respect to the VP, there are enough uh, laws on the book right now that can return people back. Secretary Johnson, your next guest, did it the right way. He, he treated people with dignity, but he returned people and he showed images of people being returned because right now the, the cartels are, are using people because they make, let's say, $8,000 a person. In two years, with all the people who have come in, the getaways included, that's about 4 million individuals. You multiply that by $8,000, and that shows you how much this yeah. bad guy is being enriched at the sake of the human beings. Well, on that point, the Homeland Security Secretary was on this program back in July after those 53 migrants died in the most tragic smuggling incident in this country. And he said it is possible because of how sophisticated these smugglers have gotten to bypass U.S. checkpoints sometimes. Um, is it that the framing of this conversation is completely wrong, uh, that it's not just people walking across, that it is very sophisticated criminal enterprises? Look, everybody that comes across is somehow controlled by the uh, by the bad guys. I mean, people who just don't happen to walk across a river or across the border, it's all controlled by the uh, the migrants. Every sector, for example, along the border is controlled by some sort of cartel uh, across. Yes, they're very sophisticated. Yes, they got the money. Yes, they do counterintelligence. What happened to those 53 migrants, we don't have a checkpoint that's big enough to handle what we're seeing. So the bad guys were able to use that checkpoint because we haven't put the resources on that checkpoint like we need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you've shared images with us of some of the coyotes, some of the smugglers who have gotten these trailers filled with people across. But there is interdiction taking place. I know you know that. What are you oh, saying yes, but is I, needed? But, well, what, I, what I'm saying is if you look at the border patrol sectors in my area, 60 percent of the border patrol agents are in border processing centers. That is, they're taking care of migrants. <laughs> 10 percent of them are doing administrative work. That leaves only 30 percent of the Border Patrol doing the work, 30 percent. Therefore, large numbers coming in will be crossing. And then you also have more deaths out there because there's less yeah. Border Patrol agents saving. Border Patrol needs help. Men and women in green need help. No ifs, no buts about that. Congressman, lastly, you know, one of the bigger problems in this country right now is the economy and the worker shortage that we have. I wonder if this is part of that. If you have people who are desperate for economic opportunity coming here and America needs workers, isn't there some way to make this work for America? 
Absolutely. I support a guest worker plan. I support a way that you can, and we passed that from the House. We were waiting for our Senate to get that okay. done. And I will tell you that if we have people under a guest worker plan, then Border Patrol's job will be done easier because the people looking for job will come in the legal way and then Border Patrol can focus on the bad people. So it would help us on, on security. So we need to make our legal system work okay. better. All right, Congressman, thank you for your insights.